I'm Glenn Spencer. I run a group called American Border Patrol. It's a nonprofit 501c3. It's located on the border in Arizona. You've never heard of me or my organization uh, by design of the mainstream media. We have a ranch right here. I have a ranch right on the border. I'm looking out the window here at Mexico. Uh, we do uh, high-tech work. I have been studying the border problem for 15 years down here. I'm a retired systems engineer. Uh, I have a patent on new border technology. And I'm about to watch a, a hearing of the House Homeland Security Committee. And what it is is a hearing on a markup or the changing or additions or amendments to a, a new bill, uh, HR uh, 3458. Now, this is uh, sponsored by the chairman of the Homeland Security Committee, Michael McCall. And he calls it Border Security for America Act of 2017. That's going to take a while for them to get started. But let me tell you something. This, this act includes $20 billion for border security. Uh, and it, it is full of pork. But let me tell you something else that you don't know. Within a few miles of where I sit right now lie about $500 million worth of border technology that is not being used. It is called the Integrated Fixed Towers. These are towers uh, all up 80 to 100 feet high that have cameras on the top of them near the border and radar. The radar is designed to spot people to know where to point the cameras. Uh, there are about 23 of them that have been installed so far. 16 sit idle pen pending testing that it was discovered they weren't tested right. Uh, so we have a total of $500 million spent, $300 million tied up in testing. One of those cameras has been sitting there for nine months. I can show you that. We began looking, American Border Patrol began looking at these cameras late last year, and we began reporting on them regularly on our website. Of course, you've never seen that because the media won't tell you. And we raised the alarm that these cameras, uh, from what we can tell, flying our drones around them. Many of them were blind. Uh, there was stuck in forests or in mountains that even if they have radar, they, they couldn't see people moving. So we blew the whistle. And in, and in June, uh, the <coughs> government, the, the Trump administration, came out with a report that said these things have never been tested properly. Now here we have a Homeland Security Committee. A subcommittee of that is the Border and Maritime Committee, subcommittee, uh, run by a uh, <clears throat> representative or chairwoman, uh, McSally. She has held hearings on these integrated fixed towers. I have looked at those hearings, and the one thing that stands out, but quietly, but stands out, is that the representative from the Government Accountability Office kept telling them that these things have never been tested properly. She didn't emphasize it, she would just say it. But this subcommittee just overlooked those things. And they allowed this to go forward. So here we have a new bill, $20 billion for border security, a lot of it for new border technology. Now, I've been at this for 15 years. When they came out with the Boeing virtual fence uh, 10, 11 years ago, I predicted it wouldn't work because they had no way of measuring success. I called it, it was a strategic border initiative. I called it the strategic bullshit initiative because there was no way to measure success. Now, guess what? 
here we are. And the Boeing system was, again, a radar-directed camera system. It didn't work. We spent a billion dollars. By the way, they're still running. They're still trying to use them. So <clears throat> Customs and Border Protection Management followed that up with this integrated fixed tower system. They had to build 52 of these. But I pointed out they were never tested. There was no metric. There was no way of knowing that these things would work. Well, guess what? Somebody in the Trump administration uh, discovered that as well. So now we have at least $300 million worth of these camera towers, which should have never been built. Because the theory behind their use was that they were going to essentially leave the border open, leave it open, let people cross in the hopes that these camera towers would spot them so that the border patrol could chase them. Now, in one instance near Douglas, I did some calculations and found out that the eight towers that they had built over there at $20 million apiece basically protected 20 miles of border. Now, just for the towers, it was $8 million a mile. $8 million a mile. Then I did some calculation. How much, they didn't have a fence there, just these little barriers that people could walk right through. What would it cost to build a real fence to stop people? $4 million a mile. $4 million. So for twice the cost of putting up a fence to stop people, they let them pass through and then chase them. Now it turns out that they may not be able to find them because their radars might work, not work. And the same applied near me. Uh, they built eight of these towers near, in and near the Coronado National Forest and Monument. And if you look at them, they've got them, some of them stuck in the middle of a deep forest with heavy washes. You know, you, they can't see anything. Now we have this markup of this bill. Uh, and by the way, Chairman Mc, uh, McCall of Texas he oversees this home, the, the uh, subcommittee that was looking at these, and, and, and they never caught this problem. In fact, we don't even know what the outcome will be because it's been months. They were supposed to test these t cameras to see if they work. We can't find out if they tested them, uh, if they work, uh, and if they're, the, the half a billion dollars was, was worthwhile. And I've looked at this bill that they're going to mark up. And you know, at the one hearing, the woman from the Government Accountability Office, who was in charge of looking at the border situation for the Government Accountability Office, was asked, how could we avoid the problems that we had with the uh, Boeing system that failed? And one of the things she said was, well, they really need a metric uh, to measure their success. But we, they've been trying for six years to get Customs and Border Protection to use a metric to measure the success or the effective or the value of an investment in this border technology. And they haven't Thank done you, it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Gambler, a couple of questions. What were the lessons from the failed SBI uh, net? Has CBP fixed the management cost and schedule problems that led to the failure of SBI net? And uh, could, could we see more of the same with ongoing and future CBP technology acquisitions? Sure, I'll answer the middle question first, if that's okay, in terms of the the, the cost and schedule. Uh, we have seen uh, improvements, particularly in CBP's schedules for some of the different land-based surveillance technologies. Uh, so that's that's been a positive step that CBP has made toward addressing our recommendations in terms of the life cycle cost estimate for specifically for the RVSS program. Um, CBP and DHS have worked to uh, conduct an independent life cycle cost 
cost estimate and tried to reconcile that to the uh, cost estimate that, that CBP has for the RVSS. And we'll be working with CBP to get documentation of that and, and take a look at it. Uh, so we have seen progress being made on both schedules and estimates, and, and that progress is really positive. In terms of your broader uh, question, ranking member, about uh, lessons learned and um, and steps going forward, I think there's two key themes or lessons learned from our work looking at CBP's technology programs. The first is that it's it's important for CBP to make sure the tech technology programs go through the DHS acquisition management process uh, fully and completely. DHS's acquisition management process, it's a robust, valid, knowledge-based process, but CBP hasn't always ensured that technology programs have moved through that process consistently. And so they need to apply the acquisition management process consistently to their technology programs. And secondly, and as I mentioned in, in my oral statement, it's important for CBP to put in place the metrics that we've been recommending for several years now so that they can really assess uh, what we're getting out of our investments in technologies. So those are the two things that we see as lessons learned and are important things for CBP to focus on going forward. Thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Gambler. A recent GAO report uh, concluded that CBP lacked the metrics necessary to show whether or how the existing border wall contributes to border security. Uh, does it make sense to move forward with President Trump's multi-billion dollar uh, wall before CBP can show what kind of return the American taxpayers? So I'm sitting there, wow, they just had this hearing a few weeks ago. Now I said, well, by all, by all means, they're going to, in this new bill, they're, they're going to have this new metric, demand for this metric. They don't even mention it. I did a search of this bill, you know, search for words, and came up with the word metric one time, and it was in something about, about pay scales. There's no mention. They say they're supposed to establish operational control of the border. I've been studying operational control of the border for years, given papers on it. How do you measure it? This is the goal of the system, but they have no way in this bill of measuring operational control of the border. They mentioned it in the beginning, so we're going to establish operational control of the border, but nowhere do they provide a way to measure it. So, you know, these are the kinds of things, when, when Donald Trump talks about the mainstream media, they're at the heart of the matter. You have, if, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube and you don't know it, you've never heard of me, you've never heard of this bill, you've never heard of the integrated fixed towers, or any of that stuff. Because the mainstream media don't want you to know about it. All I can say is I'm still, still waiting for this uh, hearing to start. But get a hold of, of your people you know. Get a hold of them and let them know you're being had. Uh, big time. And also, get a hold of the president. Now, he, has, he can provide some leadership here. I've called on him to look into this whole integrated fixed tower mess and come down with a hammer. You either tell us this stuff works or tell the American people why uh, they allowed this technology to be installed with every, without even testing it without even providing a measure of success. Would it work? You know, operational control, by law, the definition, that's the job of the Department of Homeland Security by law. It is, def the way you define it is the prevention of all unlawful entries. Prevention of all of unlawful entries. So how are they using these integrated fixed towers? Well, here they are at Douglas. They don't prevent, they don't even make an attempt to prevent Corn being present, the Committee oh. on Homeland Security will come to order. I guess we're going to meeting today it. for consideration of H.R. 3548, the Border Security for America Act of 2017. Chair announces that.